Debbie Jacknin and Larry Jackman uh, of Mosaic Glass Creations, which is a division of Jen's Jones. So we might say, okay, what do we want to create on here? Maybe we were going to create a tree since we have these wonderful things. So we often do take our inspiration from things that we happen to like. We like sailing. We have a sailboat up at Moraine State Park and we love to sail. And I love the, I just love going up there. I love being on the water. It's like being on vacation when you're just a little bit away from where you are. So we glass that we found. Sometimes, as I said earlier, we will find a piece of glass that we just absolutely love. And we could look at this and this may be an ocean for us, or this might be a tree for us. Uh, it could have a whole range. It might be grass. It could be a range of different things. We get leftover glass from stained glass, from local stained glass artists. And then one of the things I'll do when I get their glass is I'll sort through it and find uh, maybe I'll put all the greens together or all the browns and golds in one bin, so I'll start by sorting that out. We love going to uh, Goodwill and places like that and using old, wind or old frames whenever we possibly can. We try to reuse, upcycle, use something uh, that was something else already. This is a beautiful piece of brown. It's too straight and too big to be a tree. So what I might decide to do is take it and use my glass cutter and maybe just kind of give it a slight cut. Okay. So first I'm going to score it and then I'm going to cut it. I'll come and I'll do the same thing on this side. And maybe here I'll just take a little piece out of the bottom, cut that. It's no. still too big, so I might come and use my nippers and maybe nip that right here. And maybe I'll give it a second nip right here and then pop. And now I've got a tree trunk. Some of the leftover pieces can ultimately become some of the branches that we're going to use to create that. Could bring that even over here. Let it go a little bit higher. Now that'll become maybe the top of my tree. This tree needs leaves. And we could then come into our tray of green and find something that we like. I smash the glass with it. And it just comes out like leaves because it's very bright. Now we'll just come place the leaves around the tree. You can get small pieces. You can see I purposely left a space here because if you, one of the things we want to do is give depth to our pieces. And one of the ways you can give depth is if you really had a tree, you would have leaves in front of the trunk at certain places. So by leaving a space there and putting a few of the smaller pieces maybe in there, make it look like there's that branch coming in front of that tree trunk. Now I might decide that one's too big and I can come back and nip it again. Also, Could even have a branch coming right out of there too. There might be flowers, we might decide it needs a sun and, and sky. And even later, say, in order to get that right, I'm going to give that a cut so that the direction of that is going to face the tree itself. 
for if you make the change before gluing and grouting, it's much easier than trying to dig out grout and dig out glue. And we may completely lay it out and then not like the color scheme, and that's when we'll be able to more easily make a change. I'm going to demonstrate how to glue the pieces together. We just use Elmer's glue, clear Elmer's glue. I've put some down here. And I'm going to call that the center of my flower. I'm going to take some pink pieces that I've already cut small, and I'm just going to create a flower petal by gluing down the flower petal. This piece looks like a nice end of the petal. And there you go, voila, a little petal. Mm -hmm. We'll keep going all the way around. The longer you let it sit, the better, at least 24 hours. Uh, really let it dry. Depending on what glue you use, we use Elmer's glue. There are a lot of glass on glass uh, create artists or uh, gog artists who will use a whole range of other glues. This we have found works very well for us. I like to use gloves because grouting makes a terrible mess. So I like to keep my hands somewhat clean. Grouting. I have grout. And this grout, you can just pick up grout at any hardware store. We like to use the unsanded grout. Okay. And we're gonna mix the grout with water. So I'm gonna take a small amount of the grout and put it into the container. Add a little bit of water to it. Stir it up. What I'm looking for is the consistency of sort of like a cake. Oh, I just went the wrong way. And to add more of this. Consistency of cake batter. Toothpaste would be too thick. Crepes would be too thin. So just like you would maybe mix pancakes at home, you could kind of keep adding water and grout until you get the consistency that you like. Right now it's a little too runny. So I'm going to add a little more grout to it. To, that's about right. So you can see that might be the consistency of a thick cake batter. I want to let Not that sit for about 10 uh, to 15 minutes okay. and let it just harden. In this case, I'm using an old t-shirt. This is a great use for that one sock we all have. It's a great grouting sock. So we're going to take a wee bit of the grout and we're going to pour it right on top of what we've done here. If you have a really good frame, this one is metal, but if you have a wooden frame, I would come along and I would have taped that first. What I'm doing is I'm putting the grout into, you can see there's a lot of holes in here. I want to make sure that all those holes are completely covered with grout. So I'll come along here. Now there are many artists who don't grout. Uh, the artists will often debate to grout or not to grout, and there are many people who like to just uh, leave their work ungrouted. I think the grout is what finishes off a piece. So once we've put the grout on, you want to let that sit for a few minutes. Again, maybe another 10 minutes, let that sit in there. Uh, and then once you've let it sit for about 10 minutes, you can start to wipe it off. And I'll start to pull the grout off of the silver dot. Initially, the grout will come off of the big pieces a little more easily than the small pieces. I'll keep finding a new clean place on here to use because once I've pulled the grout off of here, that place becomes dirty. And I'm going to just keep doing this until I get all of the grout off of here. The nice thing about this is it is glass, so if you don't get it all off the first day, I have realized later there might be a 
grout left in something, you can still get it the next day by really scraping it with maybe a knife to get the pieces that you miss. The final touches of wiping this nice and clean, I've got the grout off of the pieces and uh, look how pretty that is. Put it into the light, completely has a different look to it. Now I would let this sit for a little bit longer and tomorrow I will come back through and cover it with Windex and give it another cleaning and then it'll really shine.